Okay, so this is the second quiz. I'm sorry it's a little confusing because the first quiz technically, technically was the syllabus quiz, but I'm not going to go over that. Um, anyway, so this was the quiz for, what is this called? The week, uh, module week two quiz. Um, so uh, let me go over that. Uh, no, the What you're seeing on the screen Um What's the point about the Comanche Empire that, that Gwen makes and that the Comanches, and this is one of the big picture points that I want you to take from this class. We tend to think about the Europeans as being tougher than the indigenous groups that they encountered. Uh, we're understanding now that was not the case by any means uh, anywhere in North America, really the Western hemisphere, but especially it wasn't true uh, in Texas, the Comanche uh, 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 native groups that came into Texas from New Mexico in the 1700s uh, were far tougher, far stronger than the Spanish. Uh, and, and what made them so so dangerous was their their brilliance with the horse that they gained access to. So anyway, the uh, the answer is is that the Comanche Empire stops the advance of the Spanish uh, at San Saba, and um, and just tell the the Comanches basically tell the Spanish no, you're not going going any further north after they defeat the Spanish uh, when the Spanish try to create the mission in San Saba um, in the 1750s. So yeah, that's. Like I say, that's one of the big points I want you to take from this class. The Comanche are tougher than the Spanish. Uh, the indigenous groups in this case are tougher than the European groups. And um, they constrict how far uh, the Comanche do, how far the Spanish can go north into North America. It's This is not the story that we're used to understanding, but it's what's becoming more and more clear to scholars um, in the last couple of decades. And the, the key event in that was the uh, San Saba mission in the 1750s, uh, which the Spanish try, tried to establish uh, north of San Antonio and the, and the uh, Comanche, the Norteños, uh, a coalition of uh, Indian groups that are indigenous groups that the Comanche put together, wiped out the San Saba mission and Presidio. Um, Aguayo, he, you just got to know who he is. He is the the Spanish nobleman. He was the governor of Coahuila, and he came up into Spanish Texas. He came across the Rio Grande in the 1720s after the so-called Chicken War, where the Spanish were defeated by the French uh, in East Texas and forced to retreat to San Antonio. And he came up here and he kicked ass. He reestablished San Antonio, reestablished the missions, chased the uh, French out of uh, East Texas, uh, established La Bahia, Goliad, and he is the European founder of Texas, okay? Uh, we tend to think about Stephen F. Austin. Aguayo's the guy that establishes the permanent settlement uh, in Texas in the 1720s, and it, I just want you to know this guy's name. He's very important. Uh, the geopolitics for the Indian groups, I've talked about that at length. You read about it. What did you have? You had the Comanches were the strongest group in Texas. They they come in from New Mexico and they in turn um, pick on uh, the Lapan Apache who had already been here. Um, and um, and then the Lapan Apache in turn pick on the, the Colotecans. And this is why the Colotecans, which are these small indigenous groups, this is why they seek refuge in the San Antonio missions. So I talked about it at length. The Comanche the, uh, beat up the Lapan Apache, who beat up the Colotecans. And in turn, and the significance of this, uh, one of them is, is it's that's why the Colotecan Indian groups come into the Spanish missions. Okay. So you just got to know, uh, you know. Like in Goliad, it was the Karankawa and La Bahia. Those were, that was the indigenous group that went into the missions in Goliad. In San Antonio, it was the Colotecan. So you just, you have to know the geography. And I, it's on the map that um, uh, I, I posted as well. It's, you can see it. It says Comanche, Lapan Apache, and Colotecan. 
Comanche strongest, Lapan Apache next strongest, and the Colatecan. Okay. And the key thing here is that it, native groups fought each other as well as the Spanish. Okay. Uh, the tradition of warfare was very, very uh, well established by the time the Spanish got here. Not everybody was living in peace, far from it. Okay. Uh, again, number four, the Comanche, the, the Norteños, uh, this is what the uh, Spanish called them. Uh, th there were many Norteño uh, native groups. I don't make you remember them all because it would drive you crazy. Uh, you do need to know the Comanche, and they were the strongest. And they're called the Norteños because the, Sp the Spanish are, are looking at Texas from Mexico City. So the, the, these Indian groups are in the northern regions of, uh, of Spanish Texas. That's why they're called the Norteños, okay? And the Comanche are by far the strongest. Uh, I talked a lot about this. It's very interesting. I think, I think, I don't know, you may not think so, but I do, that San Antonio used to be an oasis. We're on the Edwards Aquifer. The Edwards Aquifer is being sucked dry in 2023, but that's another course, another story. Uh, so San Antonio, there's plenty of water in San Antonio. And uh, because there's water, there's game. Uh, native groups had come to San Antonio for a thousand years uh, and lived in peace in this area. So it, once you're in downtown San Antonio, realize that you are just the cutting edge of, of people that have been coming here for hundreds and hundreds of years, okay? And so there's water here and uh, the other aspect of San Antonio, it's part of the infrastructure of Spanish Texas. Um, um, it's the way station between the Rio Grande and East Texas. Okay, so um, how did uh, I've talked about this uh, uh, in the podcast, and so this comes from the podcast, but I did put it in the outline. Uh, the, when the Spanish in the 1690s, remember LaSalle had come up by accident in Texas and washed ashore, and then that whole thing was a fiasco. Um, uh, he, he created in, in Matagorda Bay, uh, you know, a, a fort, uh, San, San Luis or St. Louis. He basically is murdered by his own men. Um, uh, the Spanish freak out when the, the French show up in Spanish Texas because they think the French are trying to muscle in, uh, not necessarily to Texas, but to the rich mining areas of, um, uh, of central Mexico. So from the Spanish point of view, the significance of Texas, it's a buffer zone. Uh, it protects the mining areas of central Mexico uh, from incursions from, uh, of rivals such as the French. And so when the Spanish come up after they uh, uh, find that LaSalle's um, settlement has been wiped out, they decide they need to establish a presence on the border of East Texas as kind of a chip tripwire. They need to keep an eye on the French now, uh, that they're, wor they're very worried about the French. So in the 1690s, they, they attempt to uh, uh, Christianize the Caddo. And the reason that the Caddo were good for are good candidates for becoming Christians is that they were sedentary. They weren't nomadic like the Lapan Apaches and the Colatecan and the Comanche. Uh, the, the Comanche and the Lapan Apache were never Christianized. The Colatecans were to a degree because those were the folks that entered into the um, Spanish missions created in San Antonio. But as the Spanish came up in the 1690s, and I talked about this in the podcast, they had a picture of the Virgin Mary with them which was a religious symbol, but the native groups, the Caddo thought that uh, what that's meant was is the Spanish were coming in peace. And again, this is something I talked about in the podcast and I also um, um, uh, put it on the outline. So I just thought it was interesting. Uh, I, again, if you can get into the narrative of this, it, the story of it, uh, I find it really helpful and I think you'll really find it helpful too. Okay. Um, this is a date. I just, you have to suck it up. San Antonio founded in 1718. And, um, it was part of the Spanish effort to, uh, settle Texas, uh, beginning in the 1710s <clears throat> from San Juan Batista. Uh, I talked about this in the podcast, the, the, uh, French guy, San Denis shows up in San Juan Batista, which was established in 1700. 
the Spanish freak out and they decide that after the failure of the missions in the 1690s, they need to try in East Texas again. But they need a way station. They need something between the Rio Grande River and East Texas, which is one of the reasons San Antonio was created, besides the fact that there was water here. So San Antonio founded 1718. Just got to know it. Date you got to know. You can forget it after the uh, course is over, but you got to know it now, or you did for this quiz. Big thing, I've talked about this a zillion times, that the Spanish failed to populate Texas, to, to Spanish Texas to any large degree. Um, um, by 1820, there's only about 4,000 Tejanos here. And uh, two things are true. The Spanish failed to populate Texas. Uh, if there had been, let's say, a Mexico, if San Antonio were the size of Mexico City, for instance, uh, the U.S. would have never captured Texas. Um, it, the, the history of this region would be radically different. But the Spanish never populate this area because there's no mineral wealth here. There's no gold. There's no silver. And the Indians are too tough. The native groups are too tough. So the failure to populate Spanish Texas to any degree shapes the history of Texas. Um, and um, so that's just very significant. But on the other hand, the other aspect, and I've said this a zillion times in my podcast, at the same time, the Spanish leave a permanent legacy in Texas, even though there were very never very many Spaniards up here. And I've talked about the legacy, the Vaqueros, the church, uh, Catholic Church, San Antonio is a legacy, Goliad's a legacy, Nacogdoches, Spanish language. Um, so two things are true. The Spanish don't populate Texas to any significant degree, which will have huge consequences in the 1800s, but they leave a legacy that helped shape Texas to this very day. Uh, Texas, uh, yes, I just want you to know where the Comanches are located. I, I put it on that map. You should have looked at that map. Um, it's pretty clear where the Comanches are. They're north and west of um, San Antonio. Let's see, something else you need to know, the mother mission, San Juan Batista, built in 1700 after the failure of the missions in East Texas. Uh, I talk about this, it's on the outline. It, this is a great example of something that's on the outline that I posted, it's in a podcast, and that you have to know. And I make a pretty big deal about it. So uh, that's the answer there, San Juan Batista. Uh, this one, I have to admit, number 11, it's a, it's a little bit in the weeds, but it's how do the Comanche get their horses? I talked about in the podcast, it's in Gwen. Uh, it's when the span, uh, when the, uh, there's a revolt in New Mexico, um, in Santa Fe, uh, the Spanish are kicked out of Santa Fe and, uh, all the Spanish horses are sold to, to native groups around Santa Fe. That's how the Comanche get the horse. And then the Comanche instantly turn into the superpower. So yeah, that, that question is a little bit in the weeds, but I want you to know how events in Santa Fe ultimately influenced Texas. And the big thing about the Comanche is their, their access to the horse, the importance of the horse and what the horse allows them to do. It allows them to become hunters and very, very fierce warriors. And the Comanche dominate Texas uh, all the way up until this you know midterm one. The, it's the Comanche are the strongest group in Texas. Um, and uh, I talk about this a lot. And why? Because they gained access to the horse uh, because of the uh, Pueblo revolt in 1680 in, in Santa Fe. 12, uh, well, I talked about the Comanche access to the horse, the mobility it gave for hunting and warriors. Um, 13, same kind of question. The Comanche had evolved into a warrior society. I talk about this, Gwen talks about this. Um, so clearly, I want you to know about the Comanche. Uh, the Comancheria, I talk about the Comancheria. There's a map of the Comancheria. Um, you should know where the Comanche Empire was. It's incredible that the Comanches had an empire in what's now the United States. And it was an empire that was dominated by the Comanche until my grandmother's grandmother's time. So you had uh, you had an empire in in, in the U.S. Th that was ruled by the Comanche. It's, it's an extraordinary story until the 1880s. And I posted a map. I talked about it. And it was something that uh, I want you to know about. Uh, the Mission Presidio system talked about that in the podcast. 
This was the Spanish game plan to populate its northern territories in North America, California, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, and Texas. Uh, the mission were the religious part, the presidios were um, uh, the defense. And I talked about that in a podcast, I put it in the outline, and um, I think I was pretty clear about the significance of it. Okay, so that's the uh, module week two quiz.